Good evening. Did anyone bring an umbrella? Thank you, this is your work. Good evening, welcome parents, family, faculty, and friends to Frontier Regional 61st Commencement Exercises. 
Whether you arrive by plane or simply walk down the street to be here, we are happy to have you in our company for this special evening. Welcome, Bob Halla, Frontier School Committee Chairperson. Welcome, Superintendent Carey. Welcome, distinguished guest, to be introduced later. And for the last time as students, welcome the class of 2018. Tonight, we will award diplomas and celebrate. You will hear some important messages from your speakers that will make you reflect and inspire to leave Frontier to do wonderful things. This is an evening about the class of 2018, so without further ado, I'd like to dive into our program. Would Alexa Boyden and Kimberly Aswing please come forward to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. All right, are you ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please stay standing for the national anthem. Can you go down? Yeah, okay, let me return your seats. I now would like to introduce Stephen Wordley, our senior class president, for his commencement address. <laughs> All right, hello? Can everyone hear me? Good evening, everyone. My name is Stephen Worthley. I walked into this school for the first time six years ago as a small, squeaky-voiced middle schooler with absolutely no idea what journey was in store for me. Today, we are gathered here uh, at graduation for another diploma handing out and another senior class saying goodbye. It seems normal because we do this every year, right? Well, I'd say that's where you're wrong. Um, that is because this senior class is like no other. These people, my friends and classmates, are some of the most intelligent, loving, and caring human beings on this entire earth. Whether I needed a coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, help working on a paper, or just someone to talk to, I know I could depend on any one of my classmates to supply me with unselfish help and support. This selflessness and humility reflects over us from our wonderful staff that has helped us along our incredible journey. These teachers, lunch ladies, guidance counselors, principals, janitors, and friends have gave us the incredible opportunity to make these high school's years ours forever. Although we may get mad at them and may even think we hate them sometimes, I believe I speak for the whole class when I say we cannot thank you enough for taking extra time for, for everything you do for us, whether it be staying late after class with us or taking extra time to explain something a second, third, or in my case, usually a fifth or sixth time. Everything this wonderful staff has done for us has shaped us into the young men and women we are today. 
Every one of us is starting an exciting new chapter in our life. While we might be unsure of what our future has exactly in store for us, we are certain of our past. We will always have the friendships and connections we made in this building and be certain that they will never escape our hearts. No matter where we end up or where our journey brings us to, we will always have a special connection with one another. I believe the class of 2018 is like no other because of these incredible, loving people. I know I can say that I have a friend in every one of these graduates. So now I'm going to talk about myself for a little bit. Uh, I grew up in Amherst Public Schools, which was very different from the schools in Union 38. Amherst was very large, uh, a lot of people, and a lot of activities, and very fast-paced. I school choice out and continued my fifth grade year at Sunderland Elementary. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not shaming where I grew up from or where I came from at all. Um, in the Union 38 school district, I noticed a strong sense of community. And growing up in the system all the way to my senior year at Frontier, I have never felt more a part of and accepted by this community. Whether it be the home crowd coming to support the sporting events or going to the amazing student-run performances in the auditorium or helping clean up around town, this is an incredibly close community. And now a little advice for the class of 2018. Take grasp of every opportunity that you can. Frontier gave us so many opportunities that included taking a field trip to the zoo or traveling to another country. Uh, this is your life, and don't give yourself any limits. Do everything you possibly can, and don't take advantage of anything. Don't ever give up. Our teachers pressed into us multiple times to never give up, no matter how hard we thought the subject we were learning was or how bad we wanted to stop taking that test and just leave. Our teachers encouraged us to never quit. This lesson can spread farther than just between the walls of Frontier. No matter what task you come across in life or what obstacles or challenges is staring you down, never give up. Live in the moment. Keep people you love and care about close to you. Cherish these last moments we had together as a class and carry it as a lesson through life to never take anything for granted. Do not dwell on the misfortunes of the past, but focus on what is happening now and be excited for the unknown adventures of tomorrow. High school has been the best adventure of my life and I look forward to the endless more to come. And finally to my classmates, thank you. I could not have asked for a better four years of high school. Every single one of you played a role in shaping my experience of school, and I would not change it for the world. It's been an honor sharing these years with you, and I thank you again for the privilege of speaking as class president today on your behalf. Thank you. Yeah, Hawks. Thank you, Stephen. Please welcome Kelsey Jarvis, our National Honor Society representative, for her commencement address. Good evening, family, friends, faculty, and fellow graduates. We stand here today on the precipice of the future. It's not a distant reality anymore. It begins here. It begins today. But with this in mind, it seems like only yesterday we were in elementary school. Many of the people you're sitting with today as you wait to receive your diploma were right by your side when you first learned how to ride a bike. Many of them watched in awe as you scored the team's first goal of the rec soccer game, or rounded the bases in your t-ball game. Many of the same people that sit by your side tonight are the ones that were carelessly jumping around on the polished floor of the Waitley Elementary School gym the night of the sixth grade dance. Many of the people celebrating here tonight with you are the same friends and classmates that walked the cold, snowy streets of Washington, D.C. with you in middle school. As you look around, many of the people you see watched as you scored your first varsity goal or had your first varsity hit. Many of the same people watched as you stepped foot on the field for the last time, for your one last game. Some wearing the same uniform right by your side. Life changes. This is inevitable. We are forced to enjoy things for the last time. All good things must come to an end. We just have to be thankful that the people we shared these times with made them so enjoyable that sometimes it's hard to accept that they will remain with us purely as memories. But these memories are ones we will remember as we move forward to bigger and better things. We've completed a basic education that will serve as a platform we use to launch ourselves into our futures. Some of us will go on to college. Others will go straight into the workforce. But each one of us will travel our own path. No matter where we go or what we do, there are challenges ahead of us. What I'm asking of each of you and from myself is to meet those challenges straight on 
with your head held high and your heart wide open. It's not enough to simply try to get by in life. That doesn't move the world forward. You must try to excel in everything you do. Strive for excellence in every task, large or small. The future is truly in our hands, so let's make the most of it. Before I conclude my speech, I have a few people that I feel need to be recognized. Here we are, ready to graduate. We worked hard to get to this point, but we didn't do it by ourselves. We owe a huge debt of gratitude to the following people. To our teachers, thank you for unselfishly sharing your time, talent, and knowledge with us. Yes, we know it was your job to do it, but what you did for us went beyond the call of duty. To our parents, thank you for supporting us in more ways than it's possible to count. Without your support and encouragement, where would we be? You have instilled the motivation in us to fulfill our potential, and we know that through the entire process, you will be our biggest supporters. To our coaches and advisors, thank you for making school more, about than, more than just about classwork. Through sports, we learned how to power through adversity and give it our best effort, win or lose. We learned the importance of discipline and good sportsmanship. Through other activities like participating in clubs, school plays, and service projects, we learned how to work closely with others to achieve a common goal, and we had a lot of fun doing it. So when our, many of our high school memories begin to fade, we'll ultimately measure our time we spent here, not in periods or semesters or years, but the friendships that we made and the times we have shared together. Congratulations and good luck to the Frontier Regional High School Class of 2018. We did a program change this year where we moved the scholarships to class night. As part of your program, you should have received a listing um, of this year's awards and their recipients. I just wanted to take a moment to thank the Frontier community for the 159 scholarships totaling over $81,000 to our graduates this year. This kind generosity from, our, from businesses, families, and community groups helped make the fabric of our community. I ask our graduates to learn from this generosity and when able, return the favor in kind. So I guess now we should pause. <laughs> now I'd like to welcome Ella Dean to introduce our commencement speaker. Welcome and good evening, friends, family, faculty, guests, and of course, the wonderful class of 2018. Tonight, I have been given the privilege of introducing our guest speaker, Steve Kulik. Representative Kulik has been our state representative for 25 years. Through his work, he represents 19 towns, including the four towns that Frontier serves. Through his service on the Ways and Means Committee, he has taken part in forming major policies that protect and help the citizens of Massachusetts. His work has always pushed for progress in public education, economic development, the environment and energy, health care, and food and agricultural policy. Every step of the way, Representative Kulik carries the needs of rural communities like ours with him as he fights for change, always making sure that the needs of local governments are heard. As you may or may not know, I was born and raised in the town of Sunderland. From before I could walk, my family would bring me to the Memorial Day ceremonies at Riverside Cemetery in Sunderland. First, I was carried by backpack, then I began to ride my decorated bike there, and when I entered middle school, I began marching with the band of the cemetery, which I've done for the past six years. Every year, I have seen Representative Kulik in attendance at our small town ceremony. He has attended the ceremony for as long as I can remember. The fact that I recognized our state representative from seeing him at such a small local event is reflective of the kind of person Representative Kulik is. I was taught from an early age that showing up matters. Representative Kulik has always shown up for our small towns. It is with great pride and respect that I introduce our state representative, Steve Kulik. Wow, thank you, Ella, very much for that very kind introduction. Um, those uh, 25 years of visiting the Sunderland Memorial Day observances have been a special part of uh, my tenure in the legislature. I've always looked forward to it, and uh, I'm glad you've been there every year uh, as well. Well, hello, graduates. Uh, good evening, and thank you very, very much for inviting me to participate in this special event with you. 
It's a privilege for me to join with your families, your friends, frontier teachers, staff, and school committee members to honor you, your achievements here while you prepare to step off into the next chapter of your lives. It's kind of fun for me to be here uh, because my own graduation from high school was exactly 50 years ago uh, in 1968. I know I don't look that old, but uh, you know, I do. Uh, aside from some of the odd uh, tastes in clothing and fashion that we had back then, I can remember that my classmates and I looked a lot like you do today. Happy to be graduating, a bit apprehensive about whatever comes next, but in a celebratory mood that looks ahead to the future with hope and optimism. That was despite the fact that in 1968, it was a time when there was a lot of political and social unrest in our country, a divisive war, assassinations, marches for civil rights, and deep questioning of some of the institutions and norms that form the basis of our democracy. And as I look around and think about the present day in 2018, I actually see many similarities to what was happening politically 50 years ago. There is a lot of unrest in our political system. People are still fighting for an expanded menu of civil rights. And there is significant questioning, especially among young people like you, about the relevance of the institutions and the ideals that our republic was founded on. And all of this is amplified by the constant presence and pressures of social media and the 24-7 news cycle, neither of which we could possibly have imagined back in 1968. The constant political and cultural turmoil in Washington these days and the seeming in inability of our national government to address many of the most pressing problems that we face as a people are enough to make many of us simply want to tune it out, to disengage from civic life, and to let others take up the challenges of solving society's problems. Indeed, the polarization of politics in Washington, where the extremes of both the left and the right on the political spectrum have almost eliminated what I like to call the common sense middle ground. It's enough to discourage people from getting into the game and becoming engaged in the conversation about our society's future. But I want to encourage all of you not to become one of those who are tempted to tune out and become disengaged from civic discourse as you move on from frontier to your next chapter. Indeed, I believe that right now, especially at this time, it is more critical than ever for your fresh perspectives and new voices to be a big part of addressing and, so, and solving society's problems. Often when I speak with young people about the importance of being engaged in politics and their communities, I hear comments like, but my one vote won't make a difference, or nobody will listen to what I have to say. But I'm here to tell you that I simply don't believe that. I have seen many elections at the local, state, and national levels where just a handful of votes are the deciding factor between winning and losing. The beauty of our American democracy is that everyone has an opportunity to vote and that every vote counts. Unfortunately, in some parts of our country, the rights of citizens to vote freely and fairly is under assault. But we can be glad that here in Massachusetts, we in the legislature have been working to make sure that voting is more open and accessible to all people. In the last election in 2016, for example, we had our first period where we allowed early voting so that people could vote for a couple of weeks before election day if it was more convenient for them so they didn't have to take time off of work or whatever else they had to do on election day. This was a wildly successful experiment, and almost 40% of Massachusetts voters cast their ballots early, had nothing but great feedback about that. And right now, we are considering establishing automatic voter registration, where if you go to the registry of motor vehicles to get a driver's license, 
you will automatically be registered to vote in your town. This elimination of a registration period will hopefully increase voter turnout, and I hope the legislature will pass this into law this session. And there are other, are other election law reforms on the horizon, such as same-day registration, which are aimed at getting more people, especially young people, to exercise their right to vote and let their voices be heard at the ballot box. And with important elections coming up this fall, I hope that each of you will make the effort, if you have not already done so, I'm speaking to the graduates right now, to visit your town clerk and register to vote. It's easy to do, you will feel good about participating, and you will make a difference. And speaking of our towns, I have to say how lucky we are to live in these communities where we can witness citizen-based democracy and civic engagement at its very finest. The towns of Conway, Deerfield, Sunderland, and Waitley are places that would not function if citizens did not step forward to offer their time and their expertise to make our town governments run by serving in the many town offices and committees that make decisions that affect our, our, our lives every single day. And the core institution of town to government, which we should all appreciate and celebrate and indeed honor, is the town meeting, a uniquely New England form of government where we can witness direct democracy and citizen involvement in its very purest form. It is the community's legislative body where each voter is a legislator, exactly like I am at the State House in Boston. Each participant has the right to stand up and speak on the issue at hand, to share information, to ask a question, and to, and to share an opinion either for or against whatever the issue at hand is. And when the discussion is over, that person gets to cast his or her vote to decide the matter. It's really an amazing experience and the best example I know of for regular people, average people, to have a direct impact on their local government decisions that affect them. You may not realize it now, but you are really lucky to live in communities where the local government operates this way, and I hope that it will inspire you to participate and make a difference. And in the future, even if you should live somewhere else where open town meeting is not the form of government, I hope that you will keep in mind as an example of why it is important for you to be engaged in your community and in politics and not just sit on the sidelines. At a time when society's challenges are more complex, they are also more important to address with broad input and fresh perspectives that I know this class of 2018 has in abundance. In closing, I hope that the lessons and the values that you've learned here at Frontier and in your hometowns will stay with you wherever you go, whether it is further education, the workforce, the military, or whatever. You all have the benefits of a great education and examples of civic engagement and leadership in your communities right in front of you. Let those examples inspire you to be active and engaged citizens of the world. And I wish you all the very best in your futures. Thank you again for inviting me to celebrate your achievement with you. It's really special to me as I end my tenure in the legislature this year to be able to join you tonight. And I just want to close by saying congratulations, class of 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you, Representative Kulik, for those remarks and all the work you've done for our community the past 25 years. We do have substitute positions open next year, if you so desire. It is now time for the awarding of the diplomas. Let me explain how this will work so that um, people can follow along here. Um, we will be moving the students by row alphabetically. They'll be lining up over here and be called up one at a time. Uh, to receive their diplomas. And I'm saying this for people, they, I encourage you to, just, to creep forward um, when your student is crossing the stage to take a picture. Um, and there's no unpredictability here. There's no surprise diplomas. They will be done alphabetically. And I'm going to ask Mr. Scott Dredge, my assistant principal, will be awarding 
be doing the speaking and the awarding of the diplomas. So, we shall begin. Abigail, Catherine, Antis. <laughs> Benjamin E. Arnold. Kimberly Laura Assing. Sarah Elizabeth Avery. Camden J. Barnes. Selena Lauren Bathurst. Aquasi A. Beresford. Sage Cameron Borbeau. Gabriel Cedar Boutet Foster. Alexandra Jean Boyden. Jacob Daniel Boyer. Madeline Braverman. Dakota G. Carteropoli. <laughs> Matthew Carlson. <laughs> Richard Joseph Cahoon. Catherine Anna Doughton. Gabrielle D. Davis. Ella Jessica Dean. Want to hurry this along, please, Ella? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. 
<laughs> Dulce A. Diaz. Gabriel K. Dickinson. Bryce G. Dobos. Nikola Dragicevich. Jordan M. N. Ford Solomon. Misael Espinosa Garcia. Nicolas Georgitsa. Alex B. Gorgita. <laughs> Jessup Glenn. <laughs> Noah D. Graves. Zachary Hamilton. <laughs> Owen Albert Hickey. Joseph William Hildreth. Michael David M. Kelsey. Raskovitz Jarvis. Aliyah J. Johnson. Alec. C. Jordan. <laughs> Bryce H. Jordan.
Tyler Michael Kenny. Ethan J. LaFleur. Mackenzie Dorothy Lagoy. Jordan K. Lemire. Aaron M. Landry. Joseph. Lawton Curtis Benjamin K. Litskowski. Lauren Marie McDonald. Tyler J. Mayran. Patrick McGranigan. <laughs> Emily Elizabeth Menard. <laughs> Jared R. Musica. Darian Judith Myers. Alexis Jade Noga. Jose Miguel. Angel Olvera Aguilera Mackenzie Jean Patterson Andrew Edgar John Paul Connor P. Pettis.
Abigail Pierce. Leah Giselle Pion. Lillian Emmeline Powers. Coleman R. Price. Grace Cassidy Randall. Brandon E. Robinson. Marissa Ariana Rosa. Hayden Lee Rouse. Mateo Rule Garza. Alyssa Marie Santos. Angela Rose Self. Isabel Anna Sen. Michael C. Sullivan. Katie Lee Thompson. Keegan Elizabeth. Thompson Brianna Joy Thurber. <laughs> Emily Jane Torigny. <laughs> Griffin G. Trot. Brandon Richard Truswell. Maxwell Vaughn Ward.
Daniel Michael Weary. Emma Lynn Wesolowski. Stephen Michael Worthley. Grayson T. C. Young. Abigail Sage Zioli. Annalise Celeste Zira. To our distinguished guests, parents, families, underclassmen, and fellow alumni, it is my pleasure to present to you the class of 2018.